Hey friends, have you ever felt like going for a run is like a dead end job? You don't wanna do it, but it's on the training schedule, so you go out there, but you find that you're running slower, it feels like you're running through water, you just do not feel like running and you start to hate it. Well, if you haven't, good for you, you're lucky. This past winter, I had a running slump and I just did not wanna go anymore. I would get up and I would go anyway because I was training for a marathon, but it was a slog. So today we're gonna to talk about running slumps. If you've ever had a slump yourself or you're in one now, I know it doesn't seem like you should hit like, but go ahead and hit like in the comments so that I can see that I'm not alone in having a, a period of time where you just don't feel like going for a run, even though you're, you've always loved it before. Also, in the comments, let me know if you've had a running slump or you're in one now, and maybe we can encourage each other. So this past winter when I was training for the Buffalo Marathon, I had a period of time when I just didn't feel like running and part of it was because I wasn't running really well. I was getting slower and slower. I felt like each run was like really hard. Even the easy runs were not going very well at all. And I didn't know if I was just hating my running because I wasn't doing well or was I not doing well because I was hating my running? The training that I used for the Buffalo Marathon was much more aggressive than the one I used last year, and so I wondered if some of that had uh, partly to do with why I just wasn't feeling it anymore. I also live in Buffalo, and so running in the wintertime can be very, very cold. Sometimes it's like five degrees, and you really have to bundle up and get out there, and it's dark, and you just, you need the motivation to want to do it. And because I've always loved running before, it was very confusing to me why I just didn't want to do it anymore. I, of course, wanted each run to be awesome. I mean, I blog about it, I do YouTube videos about it, I've gone to uh, run coach certification training for it, so how could I not love it anymore? It was really, really um, demotivating to me because I talk about running to people who don't even want to hear about my running and yet I did not have the passion for it anymore. It took me quite a while to admit that I was in a running slump, that I didn't want to do it anymore. I just kept telling myself, well, this was just a hard run and, and so that's why I just don't feel like doing it anymore. But I finally determined that I was actually overtraining and having runner burnout. And those two things do go hand in hand. So maybe you're in a running slump and you don't know it. In a sec, I'm gonna go over some of the ways that you can tell if you're in a running slump or overtraining and burned out. So those two things are linked. Overtraining leads to burnout. And that's what I was doing because of this aggressive training that I was under. I was running almost every day and even the medium runs were 12, 14 miles long. And that would not include the long run, which would be more than that. When we ignore our body's need for rest, we're ignoring that our muscles need to repair. We only elevate our running fitness when our body can repair itself in recovery. Resting is not just not being active or being lazy for a day or just not going out for a run. It is your body is actively getting your getting it ready for a higher fitness level. So when we ignore that, we're continually breaking our body down and we're not recovering and we're not allowing our muscles to recover. We are actually burning out our bodies. Each run we do has a purpose. When we are turning each run into a competition with ourselves, it is detrimental to getting faster and getting fitter. But a lot of times we as runners don't wanna hear that. We want each run to be really fast and we want each run to be faster than the other run. And we ignore that each run builds on the last run that you had. There are reasons why in the trainings it tells you this is an easy run, this is a conversational run, you should be able to talk. There are purposes for each and every run that you do. Overtraining your body is bad, not only physically, but as I found out this past winter, mentally. 
your motivation goes down, especially because you're breaking your body down and you're feeling like you should be getting better and better because you're running all these miles and you're running them the hard and fast, but instead you're actually breaking it down. And so that plays tricks with your brain, tells you you're not a runner, tells you you're not any good, and then that demotivates you and makes you not want to go out for your runs. Some ways that you can kind of assess for yourself whether you are overtraining, which can lead to burnout. For myself, my biggest red flag was my sleeping. I was not sleeping even though I was exhausted. I'd go out for a 20 miler and feel like, okay, tonight I should sleep. I would lay there for hours, maybe get two hours of sleep and then be up for the rest of the night. Big red flag, if you can't sleep, you may be overtraining. If you have more colds or you're sicker than you usually are, some people you know, go through a cold uh, every year or they know like in October they're gonna get bronchitis, those kinds of things. But if you are um, more sick than you usually are, then that is also a sign of overtraining. One thing that happened to me was I was very irritable for no reason really. Um, I would just, I'd get back from a bad run or I'd have to get up and I would know that I would have a run and so then I was really crabby. And so if you are experiencing some mood swings, that is also a sign that you may be overtraining or that you're already into burnout. Changes in appetite as well can be a sign. Now, if you can see all these is also signs of depression and that's kind of like what a running slump is. It's like a, it's like a running depression, but it can take over your whole life. So changes in appetite, are you, are you ravenous? Are you eating all the time? Or do you not feel like eating ever and you're not getting enough fuel then to have your body rest and recover and you're also getting, not getting enough fuel for your runs to be doing you any good. If you can never feel refreshed, if even when you do get a night's sleep, you wake up and you are just constantly fatigued, that's another sign. Another sign that shows that you are in uh, burnout mode, actually, um, that you're overtraining it has really started sliding into that is your negative self-talk. Um, if you're out there running and you're, you can't do this and you suck and you're not a real runner and you should just quit, those kinds of things too can tell you that mentally um, you are in a running slump and you need to do something about it. If paces that you were able to easily do a few weeks ago or a month ago are feeling really, really hard, that is another sign that you are overtraining your body. So once I admitted that I was actually in burnout, I evaluated my training and I decided that I was gonna cut back on some of the mileage that this training was having me do. Um, I am in my 50s and so my body does take a little longer to recover than maybe if I had been running this training 20 years ago. So I cut out the, uh, what they call a recovery run, which was about seven miles the day before my long run. I started cutting that out. So I was only running then um, five days a week instead of six days a week. If you feel like you're in a running slump and you don't have anything you're training for, maybe it would be time to take a full two weeks off. Just recover, rest, don't run. See if after two weeks, if all of a sudden you, you wanna run again. Sometimes if we have a break and we don't run and we, we enforce the, this not running thing, in a few weeks, we really miss it and we really wanna get back to it. And sometimes that can just pull you out of it. But also evaluate your training. And if you are overtraining and you're not resting, you need to not jump back into what you were doing before, but take a rest break, take the recovery. If your training tells you this is an easy run, run it easy, don't run it hard. That is not helping. And I, and I know it's counterintuitive and it's taken me years to figure that out. But if you keep on doing that, you can injure yourself or you can get to mentally to the point where you're just gonna quit and you're not gonna run anymore. Here are some things that you can try if you are in a running slump and you want to get out of it, which you should wanna get out of it. Uh, first of all, no tech. Ditch the watch, ditch the phone, and just run. Don't have any paces, don't have any mileage. Just go out there for a run. Stop if you want. Stop and get some water. Stop and take a picture. Stop and smell the flowers. Go out there and just run with no goal in mind. 
Don't try to check and make sure you're going faster. Go by feel. If you're feeling it, just keep running. If you want to take a walk break, take a walk break. Run with a friend and just have a conversation. Have no goal in mind um, and just go out there and talk about your day, talk about the weather, talk about anything but running and just have a good time. If you're an older runner like me, it all can come down to you. your body just needs more time to recover and repair. So take that extra day. If you are not feeling fully recovered, don't go out on your next run until you feel recovered because that recovery is going to boost your running fitness. So you are going to get faster but you have to allow your body to rest and recover and repair those muscles. Change your training. Um, my husband does really well with range training instead of go out and run 10 miles because that's what he's going to do no matter what. So if I tell him, go out and run eight to 10 miles, that is much better in his brain to be able to have a range. So you're not running just a certain amount of miles, you're giving yourself a range so that if, even if you only run the eight, if you only feel like running the eight, you're still successful in your run that day because you had that range of eight to 10. If you run by time instead of by distance, you can do that as well uh, with your time. Instead of, I'm just gonna go out and run for 45 minutes, you can say to yourself, well, my range is 35 to 45 minutes today. And then if you get to 35 minutes and you feel like you're done, you don't want to go on, you can stop. And you've still had a successful run because you were in your range. If you can catch that, that burnout and that overtraining before you quit running, that is going to be beneficial to you. Then you're going to be able to go on, reset, and then continue on becoming a better and better runner. So next week, I'm gonna be talking about personalizing your training, which I kind of talked about a little bit here, how you can personalize that. But I'm gonna go more into depth on per depth and personalizing your training, especially if you get it from a book or from online, things that you can do to make it more customized to you. If you have any questions about burnout, overtraining, those kinds of things, go ahead and comment down below and I will I will give you my answer. You can also email me at sherry at wrinkledrunner.com or go over to wrinkledrunner.com and there is a contact form that you can fill out. I would love to help you and I will answer all emails and I'm not gonna try to sell you anything. I'm just gonna answer your question and try to see if I can help you uh, get over your running slump. There's also a Facebook page, wrinkledrunner.com, and if you search that, uh, you'll find my Facebook page. You can also uh, send me a message on that and I can get back to you on that as well. Join the Facebook page, subscribe to the channel down below, and also over at wrinkledrunner.com, uh, there'll be a form that will pop up and you can join our email. Uh, subscribers list. Once a month I send out a newsletter and in it talks about the, all the different things that I had done the previous month over on YouTube and uh, on, the, on the blog, the posts uh, that go up and things like that. So uh, go over and subscribe there as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the run.